Hello and welcome back to the MLB DFS Slate Breakdown for August Thurs Thursday. We got a nice six gamer tonight, so we actually have a quite a few games at night on a Thursday, so it's a good day for some baseball. We also got NFL back. NFL preseason is tonight. And with that being said, the NFL tab is on Lion Star today, so uh, you can start playing for your preseason NFL using our platform. Now, before we get into today's show, come join us at Lion Star. With football coming back, there's no better time to get in in the action now and start understanding how our platform works and how you can use it best before NFL season. So it's only $29.99, gets you access to all our props <coughs> and all of our DFS tools. It is by far the best deal in the business. All right, now let's get into it. So we're going to start off by going through the perfect lineups for FanDuel and DraftKings, as well as the winning lineups for those two sites. And then we're going to get into pitcher ownership uh, for today on DraftKings and on uh, FanDuel. And we will uh, wrap it up going over some stacks and hopefully winning all the money. All right. Now let's get into it. So, DraftKings, we got Garrett Cole and Dane Dunning. You know, I said I liked Dane Dunning yesterday as a nice value option and that he didn't have much K upside. Well, he sure showed us that he does have some K upside. Um, but he ended up as a great play. And then we have the Cubbies coming through again with a big night three-man Cubby stack, two-man Yankees, and then we had one uh, one little lonely Texas Ranger guy, even though they did put up 11 runs yesterday. You'd expect more there, but there was just, you know, a decent amount of people that had good games, and when Joey Votto was putting up 30, uh, and that Cincinnati game, or the Cubs game, the way it went, no surprise that uh, Texas gets filtered out a little bit. But it was a good night of some ball. Now, perfect lineup. Too easy. 27 took it. You know, won by almost five points here. But he had Dunning and Kikuchi to, uh, to make it happen here for him. So he got different at uh, pitcher here. And then he had a nice Cubs stack and a Dodger. So the classic 5-3 stack with... Cubs and Dodgers. Nice work for them. I'm all about the stacking, all about the 5-3, so good work. It uh, They were the two chalky teams, though. They were the two highest owned teams, but he did get a little different in the chalk, or in the stack, having uh, Candelario as part of the Cubs stack uh, got him a little bit different, and then he got different with the pitching, you know, combined 27% owned for pitching is is fairly o low ownership there for pitching. So that's uh, how he separated himself from the pack, and he got it done. So congrats uh, to Too Easy. Now let's check out on those FanDuel perfect lineups. All right. All right, so no surprise. We got Dunning. We got a three-man Cub stack, two-man Yankees, and a two-man uh ranger stack so really like this i mean this is pretty much just picking on all the teams that had the most runs right and they sure did minus the dodgers dodgers put up 10 but mookie Betts was on his way to a monster game before getting pulled um so maybe he would have ended up in this perfect lineup had he kept playing but he didn't so and the winning lineup we got hoop from uh, good old Ship It Nation, Mike took it down 289.5 winning total. So solid, you know, almost 50 points off of the perfect lineup. But he went with a classic, uh, what, 4 3 1. So he had Rosario in there from the Dodgers, had a Texas stack and a Cubs stack. Get it done. And I believe he won by a decent margin here, too. Uh, oh, only two. But he was leading for a good portion of the night. 
I, uh, it's always kind of weird when you're in first early. It just feels like it never actually pans out, but it did for uh, good old Mike yesterday. So congrats to him. And now let's get on to uh, today's today's stuff. All right, so DraftKings, highest owned pitcher, Julio Urias. All right, before we get fully into it, pitching is bad today. Pitching is awkward. Really going to be hard to kind of like dig in and find too much different. With that being said, I don't really love the chalk either. So uh, just be warned that uh, today could be a wild day and we likely can get different just based on pitching ownership alone. All right, Julio Yoria. So he's versus Oakland. Oakland is better versus lefties than they are versus righties, but they're still not great. Uh, Urias, 51% more fantasy points at home. So that is a big, you know, big feather in the cap of uh, Urias here. But all in all, I find it really hard to pay 10K for Urias when he doesn't really have strikeout upside um he hasn't been good all season he just got roughed up by Baltimore got roughed up by uh Toronto you know he's been back off the IL now for for a month you'd expect at this point he's you know fully back into swing but he he just hasn't been now mind you his road back hasn't been the easiest I mean Casey and Pitt or whatever but the Mets uh, Orioles and the Blue Jays are all pretty good offenses. And now he gets a much worse offense in Oakland. My issue is just paying 10 K for him with a 21% combined K rate. You know, I think there is a very high chance of him say putting up 18 to 20 fantasy points. And that's just not going to get it done for you. I mean, maybe today it does just because pitching is so bad but generally that's not going to get it done for you all right Shohei Otani all right he is 11k he is expensive but I think you may have to just pay for him even though Seattle does hit righties pretty well they strike out at 25 percent Otani can rack up those k's 29 percent combined k rate at 11K, I don't think we're going to have that big of an issue fitting in 11K just because there are so many value options. Now, one thing I can tell you that I am not going to do is I'm not going to play Urias and Otani together. Um, I will probably play Otani with another chalk or another uh, value piece just because it's, you know, there's a lot of different ways to get different on the slate, and that is one of them, is just not playing both of Urias and Otani. Uh, next, we got Brian Wu. Now, Brian Wu started his career off very good. He was looking really good. He has struggled a little bit recently, but his stat cast data is still good. His FIP is, you know, getting a little elevated here. K rate's declining. And one thing I have to say about uh, Wu, Wu is super good to righties. His, the state, the data to right-handed uh, hitters looks really good, but to lefties, this dude is getting blown up. Uh, so if you want to stack against him, make sure you have some lefties like Otani. So this is a matchup that honestly, Wu should just intentionally walk Otani every every at bat tonight. Just don't let him beat beat uh, the Mariners, and I think the Mariners have a good chance to win the game. However, if they're pitching to Otani, I would be shocked if he doesn't, you know, beat them up a little bit. Wu has just been that bad to lefties. Now, at 7,500, he's kind of interesting in this spot. That uh, Angels offense is okay, uh, not spectacular, uh, and they're striking out a lot. So I think it's a little interesting here. Uh, Adrian Hauser, big time value spot here. Only 5,200. I mean, his projection isn't much, but look, this Pittsburgh offense isn't that good. They're striking out a lot versus righties. We got a 26 combined <laughs> K rate on a 5,200 guy. So I think that's very, very interesting, especially on a slate like today where pitching just isn't that good. And 
I think you can absolutely pay down at pitcher today just because, you know, you got Otani and you got Urias and then nothing else really high end that's that enticing. All right, next we got Christian Javier. Javier, man, I don't know what's going on with him, but he just has not been right all year long. 4.23 FIP, only 23% K rate. Uh, over his 20 starts, he has kept the walks down, but recently he's allowing a lot of walks. His FIP is at six. Stat cast data looks terrible. They're in New York and in New York, there is that short porch. So, you know, we can absolutely give up a couple home runs with a, uh, you know, 56% fly ball rate and 34% hard contact rate. Um, he has done well against the Yankees in the past, but that was last year when he was actually a good pitcher. Uh, he hasn't been that all year, so I wouldn't consider this data too much. I still think something's not right with him where he's not fully healthy because seeing this big of a drop off from last year to this, uh, this year is just crazy to me. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, he's struggling, but today with the limited amount of pitchers, he is still a little bit interesting. Uh, next, we got Jamison Tyon. Tyon has been very good lately. So he did apparently change up his pit mix, pitch mix a little bit, but Cincinnati is hitting righties pretty well. And as we have seen, the ball has been flying in Wrigley lately, and we have very similar weather uh, today as we had the last couple days. So I would expect the Cincinnati to definitely put up a couple runs here. Uh, but at 6,200, 24% combined K rate, you have to at least consider him on uh, on this slate here. You know, not not a ton of options here today. Uh, Clark Schmidt, you know, I'm not a big fan of him. I think he's kind of been getting hit hard. I think he had a little bit of good luck uh, during his good stretches. But he can put it together and he can have some nice games. Do I think that's going to be happen today against Houston? No, Houston's hitting right as well. Uh, I'd be shocked if Jordan doesn't hit a home run today. He crushes uh, righties, and there's that short porch. So, and the weather's you know warm in New York. I don't love Schmidt. Uh, only other spot I'd probably really look to get different is Sunny Gray. So, Gray hasn't been great lately. Um, however. I, I don't know if I can really go there. Look, averaging 37% last fantasy points away. Um, he hasn't been working deep into games lately. He's been giving up runs. He's been letting guys on base with walks. You know, he's a good pitcher, and he started off the season unbelievably, but has been really struggling. And I think his most likely outcome today is he pitches five innings and you know, has four or five Ks, maybe gives up a run or two. And that's not going to get it done in his salary, uh, but it would get you different. So that's the only way to, or only reason to really consider him. Uh, JP Sears, we should probably bring up. So he's cheap. He's had some really good games recently, but I got to bring this up. His FIP, 5.35 and ERA of 2.76. He has been getting lucky. I would not be surprised if we see some regression here. Nice hitting weather in LA. All right, now let's check the FanDuel ownership here. Uh, Otani leading the way, as he should be, I believe. Urias is cheaper on FanDuel, so definitely a little bit more of a consideration there. I think you got to consider Wu on FanDuel, and you can consider... Uh, yeah, I would probably be <laughs> sticking to kind of the upside here, uh, higher own guys with the exception of Wu. I mean, you could make a ca case for Mitch Keller. He just hasn't been great lately. Um, he's actually been pretty bad lately, but, uh, you know, he is, he can go out there, go six innings and strike out five, which that might get it done today if you're not letting a bunch of runs. If you're, if uh, Otani doesn't have a huge night, so pretty, uh, pretty tough go here on Fanduel. I think maybe Hauser 
could sneak up there and, and get involved. But, uh, you know, pitching's tough on FanDuel. You may have to go to Otani just because of that upside, and just nobody is close to him with the upside. Um, all right, let's go to stacks. So, highest game total, this Cubs one. Pretty sure ownership's going to be there. Yep, Cubs highest owned, Dodgers next, Cincinnati, Dodgers, Cubs, Cincy. Yep, they're going to, those three are going to get everything today. No surprise, but all three look good. Weaver isn't a great pitcher. J.P. Sears, you know, his FIPS has been terrible. His ERA has been decent. I think uh, there's some regression coming to him. Tyon has been really good lately, but the Cincinnati team hits righties pretty well, so I don't love Tyon. Uh, Minnesota, Levitor. Levitor's a decent pitcher, but he's not going to go late, and this Cardinals bullpen hasn't been great, so I would say Minnesota's actually pretty interesting here. Highest uh, projected, we got Dodgers, Houston, Houston is a very interesting one at this ownership. It's a very good offense. Uh, decent hitting weather in New York, and Clark Schmidt isn't a great pitcher. Nobody's going there, and we should probably, you know, look to get a little bit of, of them today, I would say. Um, Milwaukee. Look, Keller hasn't been great lately, so I think you can absolutely go to Milwaukee. Seattle versus Otani. Otani. This is likely your best leverage spot on the day. Uh, Seattle can can hit. They can hit the ball hard. They have some guys that can steal bases. Um, I don't mind going to Seattle, especially if they watch Otani a little bit. You know, he's been having he's been having some cramping issues the last week or so. So. If he comes out of the game a little early for whatever reason, you're right for a, a takedown if Seattle gets to him. St. Louis, Sonny Gray isn't that great. St. Louis, it's warm. You know, they can hit. Uh, and when they start hitting, they tend to put up some decent numbers there. Value-wise, Seattle versus, versus Otani. Obviously, Cubs are in there versus Weaver. Uh, Pittsburgh versus Hauser. This is an interesting one. You know, Pittsburgh can occasionally put it together and have some really ga good games, and Hauser can get lit up. So I don't mind that little value spot, low owned. Uh, Minnesota is there as well. And highest ceiling, Dodgers, Houston, and Cubs. No surprise. I mean, Cubs are obviously in a great spot, and they've been hitting, you know, <laughs> amazing the last few days. Can they... Uh, you know, put up another 16 plus runs? Probably not. But, uh, you know, you you likely don't need 16 to win a GPP. 10 probably does it. Uh, at least most slates, 10 plus will do it. So can they do that? Absolutely. All right, guys, that'll do it today. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our videos. Helps us out a ton. I will be back tomorrow for the Friday slate. You guys have a good one. Bye.